Cemeteries. Cemeteries. Today we're heading into cemeteries all across the world to talk about yeah. some of the creepiest things people have seen. At night. We start off with a first-hand account from Reddit user Anan729728 from a time when they used to work at a funeral home. This is a creepy one. They write, I used to work as a receptionist in a funeral home. One busy Saturday, everyone left to go to the cemetery with a family for the graveside service, except for one embalmer who was downstairs working. I was doing paperwork when my phone rang and it was someone calling the internal line from the prep room where the embalmer was. I answered and I could hear the radio clearly playing in the background, but nobody was on the line. I walked 10 feet into the office beside mine and the embalmer was sitting at the computer working on something. I asked her who was downstairs in the prep room and she looked at me funny and said, there's nobody down there, they all went to the cemetery. And she was right, there was no one else in the building. I don't believe in spirits or anything of that sort, but that certainly creeped me out. Next up, we have the White Lady of Union Cemetery, because what would a most amazing top 10 cemetery video be without a white lady? Union Cemetery is located in Easton, Connecticut, and it is one of America's most haunted and oldest cemeteries dating back over 400 years. The cemetery gained so much notoriety for its haunting nature that at one point it was actually studied by paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren. When visiting the cemetery at night, people have reported seeing the spirits of deceased soldiers as well as young people roaming the grounds. And of course, the White Lady. It is believed that the woman was killed by her husband during the early years of the cemetery and was buried there in an unmarked grave. She now roams the grounds mournfully and vengefully scaring visitors in the night. Now if that doesn't freak you out, maybe this will because you get a two for one. The white lady isn't the only spirit to keep a wary eye out for while visiting the Union Cemetery at night because there is also the matter of old red eyes. The angry spirit of a man named Earl Kellogg who was burned to death across the street from and laid to rest in the cemetery. His spirit manifests exactly as the name implies, as glowing red eyes that have been seen chasing people throughout the grounds. Riverside Cemetery in Ohio is known for a very peculiar story. And I say peculiar because it's not the type of story you'd probably be expecting. Most cemeteries are known for their ghostly tales, but this one was reported to have a big, hairy, ape-like creature stalking it. The creature is known as Orange Eyes. And since the 40s, people have been reporting it. Orange Eyes is said to have lived under a tunnel in Riverside Cemetery. And at that point, there were never any violent incidents reported. People would catch glimpses of the mostly docile creature, but that was about it. In the late 40s though, its home was disturbed because of construction and it relocated to the woods around Mill Lake. In 1959, a young couple spotted this massive, hairy, bipedal creature with glowing orange eyes while driving along a desolate stretch of road one night, and there have been sporadic reports ever since. Apparently, this creature is huge too, up to maybe 11 feet tall and weighing, looking to be about a thousand pounds. Next up, we have the ghost of Grey Freyers Cemetery located in Kirkyard, Edinburgh in Scotland. The cemetery lies directly next to one of the world's first documented concentration camps. You see, back in the 1670s, the Catholic Parliament of Scotland was having a bit of an issue with those who identified or worshipped outside of their religion. And so they put those people on trial, and those people were judged by a man named George Mackenzie. Those found guilty were punished. They were sent to the camp next to the cemetery and forced to live in some of the worst conditions imaginable. They were mistreated and malnourished, leading to hundreds of deaths taking place on the grounds. But believe it or not, it isn't actually the ghosts of the tormented that haunt the grounds today. It's the ghost of George Mackenzie, who was buried in a mausoleum in the cemetery after his death. When he first died, there were no signs of him, but after a homeless man broke into his 
mausoleum in 1999, it is believed his spirit was released and all hell broke loose. The ghost of Mackenzie began actually physically attacking people on the grounds, causing them to suffer from some very real injuries. Eventually, grounds management shut down foot traffic at the cemetery, canceling all tours and keeping it off limits to the public. Since then, however, tours have opened back up, but they come with a waiver you have to sign and both a physical and mental health warning. Enter at your own risk. Mowen and Smith is a small village in Cornwall, which is home to a beautiful 13th century church and cemetery. But there's said to be a horrifying creature stalking the area, a winged beast known as the Owl Man. Reports of the creature date all the way back to 1926. It started when an article came out that year in the Cornish Echo newspaper that two young boys had been chased by a very large bird with piercing red eyes. The most famous sighting was in April of 1976 though. The family was on holiday in Cornwall and was visiting the old cemetery. Two young girls were camping in the wooded area beside the church when they heard hissing sounds coming from outside their tent. When they poked their heads out to look, they saw this massive half man, half bird looking creature perched on top of the church's bell tower. They ran off to tell their father what they'd seen and the family was so freaked out that they ended up cutting their trip short. And there have been other owl man sightings around the small village, most of them by the church. Next up, we have Buckout Road Cemetery in White Plains, New York, where many people have claimed to have seen and to have been attacked by ghostly albino cannibals. Wild. The cemetery is small and it consists of only a few mostly overturned headstones and it is located on Buckout Road, which is considered to be one of the most haunted roads in New York. People who have visited the cemetery have reported seeing harmless apparitions, feeling watched, hearing noises, and having their fully charged phone batteries die on them. Oh, and albino cannibals chasing them into the night. The creatures appear on the road. When you park your car and honk your horn three times, they will appear. But be warned before you go and try this out yourselves because summoning them is not for the fate of heart. I mean, they could eat you. Now, if that's not enough, I'll throw in another little bonus. On the hill across from the cemetery, three witches were burnt at the stake, and in a nearby house, a man killed his wife. So I'm gonna go ahead, assume the place is haunted, and scratch it off my bucket list. Not gonna go there. Nope. All right, this next story is another spooky one. Again, told on Reddit by user Alcoholic Space Eater, who writes, Former funeral director here, my partner and I had just gotten back to the funeral home from a house call for a 31 year old woman who died of cancer. As we were moving her body from the cot to embalming table, we heard an audible click and the radio across the room turned on full volume of static. It's one of those old radios you turn the volume dial until it clicks to turn it on. We both looked at each other he was an extremely religious man and this event visibly shook him and he left not long after the incident. I shut the radio off as I typically used my phone to listen to music while embalming. When I'd finished the procedure and was attempting to move her from the embalming table to a dressing table, I heard that click from that old radio and it turned on full volume yet again. At that point, I was fairly freaked out and made my exit not long after. My partner and I never spoke of it again, and nothing like that ever occurred, to my knowledge, before or after. All right, for this next one, you guys, we're going old school in creepy things seen at a cemetery with vampires, which many people claim to have seen prior to the 1970s at Highgate Cemetery located in London, England. Prior to the 1970s, reports of people draining the BLOOD of various animals on the grounds were incredibly common. So common, in fact, that the town eventually came to the collective conclusion that the cemetery had to be filled with vampires. Their solution? A wooden stake, of course. Self-proclaimed vampire hunters went around to every single grave in the cemetery, dug up all the caskets, and plunged a wooden stake into the heart of each and every person buried there. 
surprisingly, it actually worked, and reports of vampire sightings ended. But it seems as though the disappearance of the vampires led to the appearance of two other creepy ghouls. Two spirits are said to haunt the grounds to this day, one a ghost man riding aimlessly through the cemetery on the ghostly outline of a dilapidated bicycle, and two, a man in a top hat. Not nearly as terrifying as the vampires, but I'm sure if you actually saw these ghosts in person, it would still make you freak out. On July 25th, 1814, the deadliest battle in the War of 1812 took place, the Battle of Lundy's Lane. Drummond Hill Cemetery in Niagara Falls, Canada sits where part of that battle took place. It was a chaotic battle. Smoke gathered from all the cannon fire and soldiers could barely see three feet in front of them. All they could make out were vague shapes in the clouds of smoke. Many of them ended up firing on their own men. The fighting lasted for six hours, and for how deadly this battle was, it's no surprise why Drummond Hill is said to be the most haunted cemetery in the country. The most common reports are of ghostly figures wearing old military uniforms seen limping across the field before vanishing into thin air. People will also claim to hear disembodied cries in the night or spot shadow figures looming over headstones. And finally, we have the plastic bodies seen in a cemetery in Norway. This story is a bit different from the others. It was shared on Reddit by a Norwegian cemetery worker, and it doesn't involve ghosts or ghouls or even goblins, just some pretty improper burial practices. So apparently in Norway, graves are protected by law, as they are in most places, but the thing is, in Norway, they're only protected for 20 years. After that, the grave spots are actually reused. The reason for this is utilization of space and 20 years, because by that time, the body should be in entirely decomposed, so really no harm, no foul, right? Well, between the 50s and 80s, it actually became common practice for bodies to be buried in plastic to minimize both smell and leakage. Once thought to be a brilliant new idea, it completely backfired when 20 years later the graves were dug up to reveal that the bodies had not decomposed to become one with the earth, but that they had instead turned into rancid versions of human soup marinated in their own bodily fluids. I find this story to be incredibly disgusting and morbid, so I definitely believe the man who posted this when he claims that it was the most horrific thing he had ever been a part of. Sorry, dude. Who's hungry for soup? Seriously. Who's hungry for goblins? They always talk about the ghosts and goblins. I've never heard any goblin stories. Yeah. You know? Guys, if you have goblin stories, yeah. Share Hashtag them. gimme the goblins. Give me the coffin. <laughs> well, with that said, uh, I've been your host, James. I've been your host, Hannah. We'll catch you in the next one. Check under your beds. Mm -hmm.